Oh, hello, I'm Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. And today we're talking about cleaning up this mess. This mess. Mm, this mess. You ever start working in Fusion and it ends up like a kitchen floor after you spill a bunch of dry spaghetti just willy nilly all over the place? Well, here's a couple tips to keep things organized slash keep yourself sane when it comes to Fusion. So first thing to point out is that this totally works. There's nothing really wrong with how these things are connected, but the danger of working with nodes is you can just put them anywhere you want. It's like the days of MySpace where you have so much freedom, horrible things happen. <laughs> So let's take a look at how to detangle this knot and even more importantly, make sure this doesn't happen as we build a comp. The first thing I like to do is right click anywhere here in the empty space of our flow and we'll select arrange tools to grid. Now, anytime that we move one of these nodes, it's going to snap to the grid, which means we can put everything in order, everything in its place. And we can also right click and just say line up all tools to grid and that will line up everything to a grid so far. Generally, you want to work left to right. Some people like to work top down. I mean, it, it's honestly kind of the same thing, but I think nodes work nicely if you start at the left and move all the way to the right towards this media out. So I'm just gonna start dragging nodes and just give them a lot of space just so I can see what's connected to what. And generally, I'm not gonna put something down here where it crosses a bunch of lines at this point. I'll just move it up here where it's a little bit cleaner. And hopefully if you built this yourself, you should be able to kind of remember what the heck everything is. But we're, we're taking this worst case scenario, right? So we're grabbing anything that's just willy nilly all over the landscape. I wonder how many times I could say willy nilly in the same video. We'll, we'll see, we'll just see. We're starting to make some progress here. So you had to clean up a node graph. The first is just to space it out a little bit, give it lots of space and just see where everything lands. You can marquee select like this to grab multiple nodes. And what I like to do is if we have one node that's connected to a big group of nodes like this, and then a couple nodes that go into it, I like to just stack the little ones right on top of it like that. But this is just a little stack and then at the bottom it connects. Then everything else we'll just kind of put around in a circle for now. Same thing over here. We're just going to kind of space this out a little bit and see where everything connects. There's a little elbow here, which we might not need. All right. So now that we've kind of spaced stuff out, we can at least see what's happening. And if we left it like this, it wouldn't be terrible. So if you just have time to do this, this is like the bare minimum, in my opinion. The next thing I like to do is go through and kind of have a template on where the types of nodes go. And really this can be anything that you want. I like to have all of my merges on one line like this. It starts with our background and then it goes to a merge and all this stuff up here goes into that one merge. This fast noise goes into the merge. These color correctors go into the merge and that's all kind of on one line. Anytime there is a mask for a merge, I like to put the mask below the merge because it kind of gets them out of the way and it's just really easy to see that that's the only thing that mask is affecting. And if you need to combine masks and everything, you're not really competing with all the other nodes up here. The other thing I like to do is kind of stack things that all go into a merge. So this color corrector, stack it right above the merge. And anything that goes into multiple things, I try to sort of have in the middle like this so that it just obviously goes to multiple things like that. For a mask here, I usually have it up above it like this unless it's attached to multiple things. So now it's really obvious what's happening just by looking real quick. This fast noise is going into the merge and then we're color correcting it a couple different ways before it goes into the merge again and we're masking each of those merges. For something crazy like a merge 3D where you have all these different kinds of 3D stuff attached to one merge, this can really get hairy. What I like to do is sort this out a little bit. So take all of my lights and put them in a stack like this and take my camera, maybe put it up here. Take all of my 3D objects like text 3D, put those here. We have particles, put that right here. Again, just kind of have this go straight down to the render of 3D and the merge right below that. So it's just a little bit easier to handle all that stuff. Now, all this over here is actually just a 3D object for our merge 3D. So it might be a good idea to move our objects over here on the left and our lights over here to the right. So we'll have all the lights together, we'll have the camera. We'll take these particles and put them up here and the text below that. And then we'll have our, looks like an image plane coming in again, left to right as much as we can. And we'll kind of group these things for the material. We have color, gloss, and normal, just so that's a little bit easier to read. And now we've cleaned up this composition quite a bit. 
So really you can do a lot just by aligning these to a grid and then spacing them and just kind of having some general rules about where nodes go. Our main comp with the merges, I like to put just as a straight line left to right down here at the bottom, the masks go under that. And then everything else is somewhat kind of stacked vertically on top of it. And things like 3D objects are grouped together. So since we have things grouped together, that brings us to our next tip. An underlay is a nice way to label a bunch of nodes right here on your interface. So let's select all of these 3D lights and I'll hit shift space bar. That'll bring up our select tool menu and I'll type UND. And because I have these all selected, when I hit add, it's gonna make a little box around this. And if I grab this box, I can move these all together, which is really nice. But if I click off of it and then hold alt and click back on it, I can just select the underlay. And with just that underlay selected, I can hit F2 and rename it. And we'll call it this lights. And we can do the same thing for other stuff. So I'll select this, shift spacebar. I already have UND typed in there, hit enter, click off, alt click, F2, particles. And you can get as crazy as you wanna get. These are obviously text, so I'm just gonna leave that. This is all stuff for the brick wall. So I might actually take this stuff out like this, select it all and put an underlay under it and call this brick wall. I can resize this underlay to be noise. These underlays are a great way to add notes as well. Even if something's obvious like this fast noise is connected to the color corrector, what is this fast noise? Well, in our comp, this fast noise is this fog. So we can add an underlay and just call this fog. And we could resize it to be under all of this stuff if we think it's helpful. And kind of move stuff around until it makes sense. So now we have this kind of categorized here. So now this is really easy to find what we're looking for. If there's a problem with the fog, it's right here, somewhere in here, right? If there's a problem with our brick wall, it's here in some of these nodes. This is especially helpful if you're going to be sharing your project with anyone else, or even if you want to come back and look at it later. A good practice is once you're done actually building your comp, just to kind of go back and organize things before you're done for the day. So that if you're gonna work on this tomorrow, you can come in in the morning and be like, oh, this is what I was doing. This is nice. You come back to a nice tidy house. You know what I'm saying? The other thing that we haven't really touched on is just renaming things. This is so obvious, I almost kind of missed it. And what I generally like to do is name my merges because the merges are really where most things actually happen on the image, right? For instance, this fast noise is just this kind of brownish fog until it's added to the image. This color corrector is color correcting this fast noise, but it isn't really the pink fog until it's added to the image, right? So we can rename these merges by selecting the merge and hitting F2 on the keyboard. And we'll call this brown fog. And this one will be pink fog. That's pink fog, not pink fong. We aren't doing baby shark. Not, not right now anyway, that's, that's next video. And let's take a look at what this is. Ooh, this is dark fog. And now with just a little bit of renaming, everything is so much clearer. Oh, it's so good. This is especially helpful when it comes to 3D stuff because you have so many things here, like the lights. What I like to do is select this merge 3D and hit one on the keyboard and we can see everything laid out in 3D space. So it's a little bit easier to see what each light is doing when we select it. So I'll just click off of it and select backlight. And yep, that's one of the lights behind our words here. This is screen right. So I'll hit F2 and I say backlight SR. And this is a point light. This is backlight screen left. And again, we can put these backlights together. We have our point lights. And we could rename this pink light, blue light, and blue light too. And what do all these texts do? Let's look. So this is the white part of tough, tough white. And this will be, this will be tough blue. And this other text is going to be that built. All right. And you know what? We'll even put them in order like this, built tough. So really, it depends on how much time you have. If you're working on a really fast project, you might not be able to go through and rename absolutely everything. It might not be necessary. It might be overkill for what you're doing. But if you can kind of get in the habit of building it like this as you go, then you'll have a lot less work to do at the end of the day to make sure things are readable and understandable for yourself or for the poor soul that has to pick up your comp. You know what I'm saying? That's true. You want to learn more about Fusion, you just click right here, okay? That's all you have to do. It's built tough. Look at this. Look how freaking tough this is built. I think it's a cool little comp, yeah? What'd you think? How do you stay organized? Would you, would you do something different? How about you let me know? How about you let me know down below? It kind of rhymes. Hey, that's neat.